The NBA was horrified this would happen. It's not only did the Sixers have the best offseason out of any NBA team this summer, they just had a shocking transformation on their roster, which is going to give them a lot more tools to play with going into next season. So we'll discuss that, including some crazy Paul George quotes that he had to start off this media day, because frankly, there was a lot of news going around the NBA right now, but the Sixers probably have the most interesting team to really talk about. So Jack, obviously, we all know. The Sixers picked up Paul George, they picked up Caleb Martin, they picked up Eric Gordon, picked up Andre Drummond. They had an absolute haul this offseason, but this team is built around the star power and specifically Joel Embiid. And we've covered, we've talked about, you know, the Sixers roster, but Daryl Morey's, you know, started off sort of media day talking about their plans for Joel Embiid. And we can take a look at his quote first, essentially saying that we're going to be very smart with how we manage him throughout the season. We actually have quite a few guys who need to be smart about in terms of managing throughout the season, still managing a high level, all that type of stuff. You know, the classic sort of spiel when you have guys like Paul George, you have guys like Joel Embiid on the roster. But doesn't seem like Joel Embiid is having much of that resting, having much of that bench in this year, despite dealing with some injuries last season, as essentially he came out and uh, during media and revealed that he lost about 25 to 30 pounds and still has ways to go. He still wants to lose more, but it's a process. We got to do whatever it takes to make sure that I'm in the postseason and I'm healthy. Jack, 25 to 30 pounds for Joel Embiid. We have a picture of him here now at this point. You don't really see it on that big of a man, but that is a significant weight loss. And it's going to have a major impact on his ability to perform next season. Yeah, Ben, 100%. I think this has always been not even a knock on Embiid, but the one concern we all had as fans is can he stay healthy throughout the whole year? And this is going to help him do so 100%, assuming he can still have a regimented plan of not overplaying uh, throughout the A2 game season. This is going to be huge for him. And he's a guy, he, he's such a big center from, from a build perspective that he can afford to lose 25 and 30 or 30 pounds and still be super dominant as a player. So I don't think, I don't think this is going to have any negative impact on his offensive game or his rebounding as well too. So I'm really happy to see this. And if you're a Sixers fan, this is huge. Yeah, it's massive. We saw guys like Nikola Jokic. We saw a lot of these players come out and lose that weight. And frankly, just turning, that's when Nikola Jokic came into MVP form. And Joel Embiid last season was already you know, on the MVP level, right? Like the dude is putting up 35 points per game, 11 rebounds, six assists, 1.7 blocks, 1.2 steals. I mean, with that stat line, I don't even care where the Sixers were really positioned in the standings. If Joel Embiid was healthy, you he deserved that MVP award if he's putting up 35, 11, and 6. It's just kind of the reality of the situation. But again, you're dealing with injuries. You're dealing with this type of stuff. That's kind of how it goes. And now people might be uh, looking at, as you mentioned, right? He loses the weight, then he's be able to play more games and then maybe push for an MVP award because that's been a huge narrative for Joel Embiid in the past. But no, he's come out and said, he, we have to do whatever it takes to make sure that I'm in the postseason and I am healthy this year. There's no agenda. There's no all-star. There's no all NBA. So Jack, this is the most focused I've seen Joel Embiid going into a season. This is the most I've seen him sort of going to year. And frankly, this is the year he should be really locked in and focused because the Sixers made some big, big transactions the off season. Daryl Morey was cookie, but specifically bringing in Paul George. But do you think Joel Embiid can be this leader? Cause obviously Maxi, Paul George, they're going to be the one, the two, three on this Joel Embiid sort of star team. Do you think Joel Embiid, this sort of mentality, losing the weight, focus, saying all the right things in the media, he used process and didn't even reference, you know, winning games and stuff like that in his quote. Do you think he's in a position to really take this team to championship level status or are they still a move away? Are they still kind of in this weird spot? No, Ben, I think this is do or die for the Sixers, first of all. This this roster can't get much better. Like, it is so crazy how, all the moves they made and they're, they were already a pretty good team last year. So, firstly, I think Embiid has... He's set up, and this is this is his do or die moment. He's getting older too, so not to be too gloom and doom. So he has to make this move now. But I also think he has what it takes to do it. I've my perspective on Embiid has always been he just gets injured, but we've seen how competitive he is as a player throughout that series with the Raptors. He always is super emotionally invested, and I think he does a good job from a leadership perspective too. And he has what it takes, in my opinion, to be the leader. Obviously, he's the best player from an individual and team perspective, but mm -hmm. he has what it takes, in my mind, to be a true leader on the best team in the NBA. And I think he's shown that historically, that he has what it takes. So I don't think it's going to be a surprise to anyone if he's able to, to get the Sixers at least to a finals appearance. But I truly believe that this is the best chance the Sixers have at winning a championship. And I'm not, if, I'm, if I had to pick someone, I'm definitely not worried about Embiid showing up 
yeah. and and showing up from a leadership perspective as well too well let's talk about showing up in the postseason talk about these types of things playoff p is always a guy that's brought up and you know the memes aside paul george is still a phenomenal basketball player 23 points per game five rebounds four assists was on a weird sort of positioning team last season a lot of guys that did the same things you know with Kawhi, with norman powell with joel uh, with J- joel and beat goodness gracious james harden on that clippers roster right still shot 41 percent and is 34 years old so getting up there in age as well but still shot 46 percent on corner threes and now as the second option probably even the third option on this team if we're really speaking frank with how good tyrese maxi's been lately Paul George getting out into this group is a massive acquisition and he came out and had some interesting quotes himself basically uh this media day talking about this is the first time I've ever played with an elite point guard and an elite big man all at once now I went back and thought about uh you know old Paul George teams old squads that he had obviously those Pacers teams you know George Hill was a solid point guard but not I guess it's fair to not say he was elite Roy Hibbert was a multi-time all-star let's put respect on there Russ Westbrook in there with OKC, Steven Adams getting some strays, you know, uh, I guess James Harden, the PG, you know, what, Zubach getting some strays there, but he's probably right in terms of his assessment, playing alongside Tyrese Maxey, playing alongside Joel Embiid, and this roster construction has just really fallen into the place really well. I mean, you add different guys, like Yabuselli, who Nick Nurse came out and said that he's going to be in the rotation. Be a, we saw how dominant he was out there in the Olympics, right? Dunking on LeBron James, absolutely decimating Team Canada. We saw Eric Gordon get added to the team, Caleb Martin. We saw a lot of guys get added to the Sixers group. And just in terms of the well-roundedness of this roster, how are you viewing this Sixers team when it stacks up to other teams in the Eastern Conference? Ben, I think this team has so much depth. I know the Knicks are probably another team that come to mind. And same thing with the Celtics too, that have a core starting five that's elite, elite, like top of the NBA, but then also have a few guys as well too. But I personally think like, if we go through the roster, there's so many guys like Caleb Martin's a super underrated player. Eric Gordon, I also think is underrated as well too. And having these guys come off the second unit and maybe play some time with the starters as well too, it's going to be huge for the Sixers and for guys like, Embiid and, and Tyrese Maxey and maybe even PG to be able to spend a little bit of time on the bench and not have to worry about you, like the other team going on a 15 point run. So I think they match up roster to roster super well with all the top teams in the East and the West as well, too. Yeah. This is just it's it's crazy when we look back at this offseason i think it's going to be special yeah. uh, a few years from now and then you get a skinny joel Embiid, you get a 30 pounds less joel Embiid being mobile out there on the court and you hit the nail on that right like the depth on this roster is what's going to give them the chance at winning a championship because you know the knicks they just beefed up their starting lineup some people don't like the trade some people love the trade but that starting unit of jalen brunson og and ob mikhail bridges uh carl anthony towns mitchell robinson or if you want to switch Mitchell Robinson with Josh Hart. You can do that whichever way. You know, that's pretty good. But they depleted some of their depth in making that trade. The Boston Celtics are a team that, yes, had some depth last year, but Al Horford's getting a year older. And, you know, they have their top six, which is solid. But you look at the Sixers, right? And we went through, we listed kind of their roster. You have Tyrese Max, you have Kelly Oubre, you have Paul George, you have Joel Embiid out there in this group. But then you also have a whole second unit of guys that, you know, Andre Drummond, Kyle Lowry, Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin probably will, will start with this group. But you have Ricky Council, you have Yabu Selle. You have a ton of players that are going to be out there serviceable to get legitimate playoff minutes. And we all know injuries are going to happen. We all know these things are going to happen that, uh, you know, affect teams going into the postseason and stuff. And frankly, you know, they have the depth to be able to deal with certain injuries, which might end up being the case for, you know, Paul George, Joel Embiid team, you know, star studded team. But regardless of whatever happens, this team is kind of built to really compete right now. And, you know, if you had to pick, you know, because right now the cream of the crop at the Eastern Conference is the Philadelphia 76ers, Boston Celtics, New York Knicks, Milwaukee Bucks, if you th- want to throw them in whichever order. But what team right now, if you had to predict, Jack, watching the media day, seeing the new threads are coming out of the Eastern Conference? You got to make that prediction today. This might be the craziest, the most biased, like uh, recency bias move or pick, but Honestly, I think the Sixers, man, I, I just, there's just a feeling, bro, this is Embiid's year and this, we'll see, maybe this, maybe this all changed my mind, but I truly think like seeing Embiid and seeing all the moves as, as I've had time to reflect over the past month or so, the Sixers have always been an elite team. And now that they've added all these pieces Embiid seems as hungry and as healthy as ever. And then I think PG's honestly seems pretty hungry too. 
Uh, and then Maxi has never been a problem with him. And then honestly, this whole roster, it's just this team, if they can't do it now, I just don't see how they'll ever be able to do it. And I think that's why I'm going with the Sixers to to make it out the East. And I, I think they could be championship favorites too. Yeah. Anyone but the Celtics. That's kind of, that's my take. That's what I'm, <laughs> what I'm pushing for. The narratives that that's coming out here. The Knicks are a team that I really want to see get out there on the court because again, the, mm-hmm. the wing tandem, the stifling defense of OG and Obi Mikhail Bridges is just going to be something to really watch to behold in a Tom Thibodeau system. That just sounds horrifying for anyone that's going to be able to dribble <laughs> basketball. But let's know what you guys think in the comment section down below about this Sixers off season and, and frankly about Joel Embiid losing close to 30 pounds. Let us know in the comment section. You guys are the best thing so far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Signing out. Cheers.